single room occupancy part two so anyway just to recap just to say it again without all of the dripping sarcasm so there i was mr delusional i was going to write my big novel see and then after i finished writing it i was going to leave the hotel lock stock and barrel and then years later after i was a famous author people would write about the famous author and describe how famously he had once suffered he rose from obscurity living in a series of tawdry hotels some worse than others some actually flop houses but wherever he went he still continued to write after these first perpetually delusional salad days of mine had run their course and lost a bit of their luster the glorious fantasy abated somewhat with five years now under my belt of living in what was probably the last refuge of the dregs of society before outright homelessness began rearing its ugly head and still not having written that shit-kicking blockbuster novel of mine i began rebuking myself without mercy well genius i would say to myself for instance congratulations on a job well done or at still other times i would say to myself well genius or should i call you mr genius you certainly are taking your sweet time about it what's it been now six years seven years no five i would answer myself oh excuse me your excellency five years only five years fortunately however whenever i heard this voice this internal rebuking merciless voice another voice would immediately spring into action by saying things like hey don't rush him ass wipe the kid knows what he's doing and it certainly isn't procrastinating hey just because you and i don't know jack shit about the creative process doesn't mean that he's clueless so buzz off slime bucket because we don't need you we've never needed you i liked that second voice it was an extremely nurturing reassuring voice unlike the first voice which was not so nurturing and reassuring still more time elapsed at the anachronistic grotesque shithole and still there was nothing nothing but zero zero novel zero fame zero fortune zero anything other that is than all of the faces the strange faces the surreal faces those strange and surreal faces i swear seemed to come straight out of some expressionistic painting by edvard munch or ernst kirchner monstrous faces every one of them except for mine of course which was extremely beautiful one night one of the night clerks was murdered i saw the whole thing some whacked out petty drug dealer sashays into the hotel lobby around 10 p.m on a friday night he approaches the front desk and then he asks ramesh to ring up 6b which ramesh promptly does which he promptly does a couple of times however nobody in 6b picks up the telephone then the petty drug dealer demands to see the person to go up to his room because he's sure he's in there 
they had this appointment, you see, this big petty drug dealer business conference or something. No, Ramesh says to the guy, you're not allowed to do that. Hey, fuck you, the petty drug dealer says to Ramesh then, defiantly ignoring Ramesh's prohibition and spinning around then towards the stairwell. No, Ramesh says to him again. Wait, he says to him. Stop, he says to him. Only the petty drug dealer doesn't stop. And this is where Ramesh makes his big mistake. He now touches the petty drug dealer. He now lays his hands upon the petty drug dealer. Well, it was really only one hand, and it was really only very lightly. Nevertheless, the petty drug dealer, being a petty drug dealer, that is to say, being an emotionally labile, wild animal, immediately pulls a knife on Ramesh and stabs him three times in the chest with it. Ramesh falls then. He falls hard. We can't actually see him, mind you, after he falls to the floor, because he falls on his side of the front desk, and the front desk is now obstructing our view of him. However, we all know that it's not looking very good for Ramesh, that it's looking very, very, very bad for him. No doubt, poor Ramesh is now lying in a pool of his own blood, probably dying or already dead. So what now? So nothing now. Not as long as the petty drug dealer is still wielding his knife anyway. So we wait for a while. We just stand there and wait. Naturally, nobody asks the petty drug dealer to leave, nor do any of us ask him to stop wielding his knife. He does this on his own. He does both things on his own. He puts the knife away, and then he just splits, just like that. Mission accomplished. After he leaves, Alice calls the police, and Ramon and Portia call EMS. Ramesh is looking pretty bad. It's a pretty impressive looking pool of blood. EMS tries to revive Ramesh, only they can't do it. It was pretty awful. <laughs>